How's it going everybody? I'm Jason with the Review Suite. In this video, I'm going to show you how to customize GNOME 42.2 and Debian 11. So the first thing we're going to do to customize our GNOME desktop and Debian is to enable minimize buttons on the windows. So we're going to go into activities and then we're going to search for tweaks. And then from here, we're going to go to window title bars and we're going to enable maximize and minimize. And you can have these either on the left or right. It's totally up to you. From here, we're going to customize the top bar. Now, I like to have the seconds on the clock and I like to have the weekday. So we got the full date and time right on the top bar. So the next thing we're going to do is add some keyboard shortcuts. So from here, we're going to go to settings. Scroll down to keyboard. And then we're going to choose view and customize shortcuts. If we scroll to the bottom, you'll see the custom shortcut button. I'm going to choose that. Then we're going to click add shortcut. And this first one I'm going to add is called X kill. So if you're running a program and it freezes, you can kill it with X kill. I'm going to type X kill here. X kill with a uppercase X. And then we're going to add the shortcut. And I'm going to choose control escape. Then we'll click add. The next shortcut we're going to add is terminal. Now, if you use Ubuntu, control alt T is the default shortcut for opening up terminal. But for some reason, it's not available and Debian 11 with GNOME 42.2. So we're gonna click the plus button and then we're gonna give it a name. We're gonna call it terminal. And then in the command box, we're gonna type in GNOME dash terminal. Set shortcut, control alt T, we're good to go. Now if we hit control alt T, you can see that terminal opens up and we can start entering in some commands. All right. So from here, we're going to add some extensions. Now the extensions app is installed by default in Debian 11, which is awesome, but we still want to enable it in Firefox. So let's open up Firefox. And then we're going to go to GNOME extensions. extensions.gnome.org and then we're going to click here to install browser extensions. Continue to installation, add. You don't have to do this, but I do allow extensions to run in private windows. So we're going to click OK and we're good to go with extensions. Now, the first extension you should install is, of course, user themes. If you really want to get deep down into customizing the look of your desktop, you should definitely install user themes. So we're going to click user themes, turn it on and we're good to go. From here, we can install custom shells, icons, etc. So the next extension I like to add is, of course, dash the panel. The panel is up top by default. You have your date in the middle, your activities on the left and system settings on the right. I like to have the panel at the bottom and dash the panel will enable that. So let's install that real quick. Now with dash the panel installed, everything is at the bottom, all the applications, system information, and so on and so forth. Okay, the next extension we want to add is desktop icons ng. Now, if you look at the desktop on the base installation, you can't add any items to the desktop and there are no items on the desktop. So if you're coming from Windows or any other whatever distribution or operating system, we're pretty much used to having some sort of desktop icons available, where they be trash or your home folder. So we need to add desktop icons to get that access on GNOME 42.
So we're going to enable this one. Install. If you go back home, you'll now see a home folder and a recycling bin. So starting to look somewhat familiar to other operating systems that you might be used to. So now that we have these extensions installed, we can begin to tweak the desktop to our liking. So the first thing I like to do is move over my desktop icons to the top right. And then from here, I want to go down to the panel and customize the panel settings. Now, if you want to customize the panel, all you have to do is right click and then click dash to panel settings. So if you scroll down, you can change the panel position. You can change the panel thickness and you can change the length. I keep it all at 100%. Um, I stick around the default 48 uh, for the panel thickness. Again, if you wanted to change it back to the top, you have that option left, right, etc. But I like it at the bottom. So at the bottom, you have the option to change the visibility and position of items in the panel. At the top, you see show applications button. If I click visible, it'll remove it. If I click visible again, it'll bring it back up. You can add the activities button back if you like. I personally don't use the activities button, so I keep that invisible. There's a left box. There's a taskbar with everything that's in the dock. So if you click visible, all of your pinned applications will be removed. And I like to move the taskbar in the center of the monitor. So I'm going to click monitor centered. And as you can see now, all of the taskbar items are in the middle. So I want the show applications button next to the taskbar. So I'm going to click monitor centered and I'm going to move it down. And so now it is in line with the rest of the applications in the taskbar. Now I like to have the date and time menu on the far left. So I'm just going to move this up and I'm going to keep moving that up until it's completely on the left side. Just keep going. Now it's on the far left and I'm going to have it stacked to the left and now it's on the left side. So whenever I open up date and time, I can see all my notifications, my calendar, today's events, etc., all on the left. And I keep the system menu on the far right because I'm, I guess because I'm right handed. <laughs> now you can also change the style and behavior of the panel if you like. There's application margins. If you want the indicator position of each application um, to be in a different position, you can change that. If you want it on the top, you can change it to the top and you can see the icon or the indicator move to the top, left, right, however you want. I'll just keep it on the bottom for now. You can really go in and fine tune the panel as you like, but I'm just going to leave it as is for now. So I really like how things are looking right now. It's pretty much a traditional desktop layout style. And uh, it does have those little quirks that you would come to expect in an operating system, for example, like Mac OS. But I do want to customize it a little bit more. So I'm going to go and right click on the desktop and then I'm going to go into change background. Now, when you click change background, it takes you to the appearance tab and settings. I like dark mode, so I'm going to change it to dark mode. Looks real nice. So the last bit of customization I like to do in my GNOME desktop is to change the icons. To do this, we need to go over to gnomelook.org. And from here, if you look at the left hand column, you can click full icon themes. And you can choose from the various icon sets provided by users in the community. So I'm going to scroll down and I really like this colloid icon theme here. So I'm going to click that. And before you install it, you can take a look at the icons. And from here, you want to click file and you can either download the colors that you want or you can install them with OCS install. All right, so let's set up OCS install. 
So I'm going to click the question mark here. And then I'm going to right click on this URL to open it in a new tab. So I'm going to click files. And then I'm going to click this last option here. OCS URL 3.1.0 Ubuntu AMD 64 Deb. Then I'm going to download it. So I'm going to save this file. And then from here, we're going to open up terminal. And then we're going to type CD downloads. I'm going to click LS to list the contents. Our download is there. So we need to install this. And actually, we should just be able to go in right from the file manager, click downloads. And then if you right click on it and click open with other applications, click software install, and select, it'll open up right in the Ubuntu, oh, excuse me, software manager. And then you can just click install. So OCS URL is installed. We can close this, go back to Firefox. And now we can proceed to install the Coloid icon theme. So I'm just going to choose the first option here. I'm going to click install. I'm going to click install again. And then I'm going to set this by default to open up OCS URL links from this website. Open link. Okay. Installation successful. So from here, we're going to open up tweaks. We're going to click appearance and for icons, we now have the colloid option for icons. So I'm going to choose colloid dark and now my icons have changed. So we have a new folder, a new trash can. All the apps look different, uniform, nice square with rounded edges, just how I like it. One last thing I like to add or make visible on this setup because I'm on a laptop is to make the battery percentage visible. So if you click on settings, and you go down to power, you can show battery percentage by clicking this toggle. I'm plugged in, so I'm at 100%, so I'm all good. So that's pretty much everything I like to do to customize the GNOME desktop. Nothing too flashy, just a few extra extensions and a custom icon pack, and I'm good to go. I like to think of this setup as a hybrid between Mac OS and Windows 11. There are a couple of extra extensions you can add to make this setup look a little bit more like Windows 11, but I like the way it is. And to me, it's pretty dope. There's nothing getting in my way. Everything is in place just the way I like it. And it works for me. But that's all I got for this video. Down in the comments, let me know what icons and shell themes you like to use in GNOME. If you found this video helpful or informative, hit the like button. And if you want to see more Debian videos, subscribe to the review suite. I'm Jason, and I will see you in the next video.